The rifleman's effectiveness depends to a large degree upon his rifle. It must be as lightweight and rugged as possible. AR-10, the modern combat rifle, a lightweight, rugged, and versatile weapon. Today, we're going to be taking a closer look at the heart of the AR-15, its receivers, and the materials used to make them. Most AR-15 receivers are made of either 6061 or 7075 aluminum. 6061 aluminum was developed in 1935 and primarily served the emerging aviation industry. Behind the introduction of the AR-10, lies the technological and manufacturing resources of the Fairchild Engine and Airplane Corporation. Eugene Stoner developed his first rifle, the AR-10, on the back of the 6061 aluminum alloy. The aluminum alloy rifle was not only lighter than its steel counterpart, but nearly as rugged in that particular application. Aluminum suffered little ill effects from damp or humid environments, unlike steel, which must be first finished and then kept oiled. When the M16 was chosen as America's fighting rifle, it was constructed of 6061 aluminum. The aluminum alloy was good, but did suffer some ill effects in the humid jungles of Vietnam. Eugene Stoner requested that instead, the rifle be constructed of the stronger 7075 aluminum. The 7075 alloy was developed secretly by Japanese metrologists in 1943. The 7075 alloy proved to be lighter and stronger than 6061. 7075 has a tensile strength of around 83,000 PSI, while 6061 only has a tensile strength of around 45,000 PSI. 6061 does have an edge on 7075 though. The 6061 alloy is much easier to weld. 6061 is also cheaper than its 7075 aluminum counterpart. AR-15s made of 6061 were more common 15 or so years ago than they are today. Some have speculated that receivers were constructed of 6061 aluminum during the Federal Assault Weapons Ban because if they were damaged, they could easily be repaired by welding. While the alloy is important, the tempering process is equally as important. Tempering metal brings out its best characteristics. Tempering usually involves heating, cooling, and quenching of the metal to achieve a balance of hardness to flexibility. In the case of the 6061 and 7075 alloys, both are tempered at a rating of T6. This process takes in excess of 24 hours and involves several cycles of heating, quenching, and aging of the metal, which brings the aluminum and alloying elements together, producing the strongest possible version of that alloy. Another way to increase the wear of the aluminum receivers is by anodizing them. Anodizing is an electrochemical process that involves the aluminum parts being placed in a chemical bath. The parts being anodized act as the anode, hence anodizing. The process converts the surface of the aluminum to aluminum oxide, which is much harder than the raw aluminum underneath. The process also opens small pores in the surface, which can then accept a dye, which is often black in the case of AR-15s. Most industry experts agree that given the choice, 7075 lends itself better than 6061 when building AR-15 receivers. Now, that's not to say that 6061 doesn't have a place in the firearms industry, but it seems more and more that it's not with the AR-15.